Aside from The Last of Us, which remains one of the only games with enough weight behind it to contend with anything in the filmic or literary world, the most popularly discussed titles our medium has produced are the likes of Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, or Assassin's Creed. Games which, respectively, are about murdering thousands of people, shooting an entire armory full of guns, or just stabbing people in the face. Don't get me wrong, I'm well up for a spot of wanton destruction, big up that cheat code in the original GTA, but these titles don't bode that well when held up against the Shawshank Redemptions or 1984s of this world. Many gamers know how ridiculous our beloved medium is, and to be honest, it's part of why we love it so much. But for those on the outside looking in, it can result in a troublesome and muddied view of what's on offer. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and as they'll always require a little bit more breaking down to understand their appeal, these are eight video games we'll be ashamed to tell our kids about. Number eight, Dead or Alive. Give it, say, another 10 years. What will the Dead or Alive series be remembered for? Will it be the incredibly easy to get used to, hard to master fighting system? The exquisitely well animated characters? The showcase of one Ryu Hiyabusa who also starred in the stupidly hard Ninja Gaiden games? No, of course not. It'll be because every female character had bosoms so out of control they threatened to put someone's eye out. Many gamers got their first look at the series on the original PlayStation, and as the series made its leap to the Dreamcast and PS2, the increased graphical wallop also meant that the boob physics, as they've become known as, increased tenfold in the rendering department. In short, what was once a completely ridiculous inclusion in the first game was now controllable by how high you set the age slider in the options. So, if you told the game you were older, you'd get bigger, bouncier boobs. Number 7. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 – The No Russian Level Modern Warfare 2's No Russian level lingers in the memory as a weird stepping stone between games being big, dumb action titles potentially made for kids and the immersive, artistic experiences that have popularized this decade in particular. It's fairly clear what Infinity Ward were trying to do by putting you in control of an undercover operative amongst a group of terrorists as a firefight breaks out, but due to the overblown nature of Call of Duty as a series, nobody was looking for anything remotely philosophical or thoughtful. The main idea behind the level was to question how easily you would pull the trigger on thousands of innocent civilians under the in-game guise of maintaining your cover. However, the level itself is flagged with a warning in the game, allowing you to opt out if you please. In doing so, though, it piques curiosity for first-time players as to what's on the other side of that question, presenting the content in a way that comes across way more as how much of this can you stomach, rather than anything more meaningful. Number 6. Duke Nukem Forever Duke is by far the most annoyingly outdated, misogynistic meathead there's ever been. Born out of the 90s action hero stereotype we all know and love, thanks to a heady dose of nostalgia of course, when he made a return in 2011 and was still trying to get across the whole guns and babes thing without a hint of self-awareness, it was enough to make anyone cringe. The objectification of women in games has been a continual talking point ever since Princess Peach was the damsel in distress reward for a successful romp through a series of castles. But here, Duke took it to another level. Throughout the pre-release and especially after the public got their hands on it, one of the most talked about inclusions was a mode called Capture the Babe. You know, like a spin on the more traditional capture the flag, but with a woman. Because to Duke and his developers, both flags and women are literal objects that can be easily carried and placed. I say developers plural because the game was passed amongst so many teams in its lengthy 15-year creation, yet not one of them took their heads out of the sand to realise how incredibly offensive the portrayal of women in the game was going to be in the modern world. All the same, Duke plays an important part of the evolution of games as a medium, and with his standing as one of the most recognisable early game heroes, he acts as a perfect bookend to where the vast majority of these characters have finally been put to bed. Number 5. Grand Theft Auto 5 GTA is a strange beast when you really think about it. In the future, we're surely going to look back on titles like Grand Theft Auto and analyse exactly why the biggest selling entertainment property of all time was a game where you progress by killing, bludgeoning and destroying everything all around you. Fancy stealing an ambulance and mowing down an entire course of golfers? How about grabbing a semi-automatic rifle and taking the fight to Beverly Hills-style vistas full of pompous, self-righteous celebrities? There's always some overarching purpose to the carnage and mission structure, but as any who have tried to convey to a loved one or friend who doesn't play games exactly what the appeal of the series will know, it's pretty hard to put into words without sounding like a total maniac. Number 4. Bayonetta Although she's a candidate for one of the most badass females going, Bayonetta is another character rather like Duke Nukem who's been designed to appeal to a very specific demographic, again being horny teenage boys. Granted, if you slap a pair of breasts on about anything, you'll get the vast majority of the male population's attention, but with Bayonetta, it's all about getting across an aura of self-empowerment as a total power fantasy. As you'll find when thumbing through your average manga section down the local comic shop, there's something incredibly appealing about the brightly coloured escapist fantasy that Bayonetta inhabits. If an over-muscled space marine tearing demons in half with his bare hands is one side of the male fantasy coin, then the other is surely a beautiful woman with a host of spells and twin pistols doing exactly the same. Number 3. Carmageddon From sexy, spectral witches to something that strips away all character and puts you behind the wheel of a muscle car, asking you to kill as many innocents as possible, with bonuses if you completely obliterate pedestrians. It's one of those old-school games that would never get a decent publisher today. In the 90s, though, gaming was most definitely seen as a marginalised medium. 
played wholly by people who quote-unquote lived in their mother's basements and who would burst into a sweat if there was anything female within a 10 mile radius. Therefore, games like Carmageddon were easier to accept, purely as experiments with what you could create and get away with. This was a world before Grand Theft Auto, and especially before GTA and 3D would change everything, so people were a hell of a lot more forgiving, looking at the series purely as throwaway and nihilistic entertainment that let you indulge in humanity's dark side. Number 2, Mortal Kombat 9. Mortal Kombat may be one of gaming's most recognisable household names and one of the most violent video games of all time, but it was with MK9 that the series seemed to be nearing a tipping point when it came to depictions of gore. Although it's all very clearly labelled as being in a fantasy setting, things like Kung Lao's fatality finishing move were rendered in such an impressive graphics engine that it caused champions of the medium such as Charlie Brooker to remark that regardless of how much he'll stand up for games and expression, he found it to be utterly disgusting. Netherrealm responded by not including anything quite so cerebrally affecting in Mortal Kombat X, but it begs the question going forward. Will increasingly realistic depictions of controllable violence ever really become a problem? Speaking of which, number one, Manhunt. Often referred to as one of the most controversial games of all time, Rockstar Games Manhunt is one that although it spawned a sequel, will forever be held in infamy by the mainstream press as a murder simulator, where the only way to score high in the game was to eviscerate your opponents with any and everything you can get your hands on. From plastic bags to scythes, knives, police batons and machetes, the premise of the game centered around a half-staged world where filmmaker Lionel Starkweather was making a snuff movie, a quasi-mythical real-life term where the contents of said films depict people actually killing one another. It's all supremely dark material, and one of the most disturbing mass-marketed titles ever created. However, the game itself was actually very well thought out and put together. The world and levels that you're stuck in are meticulously crafted, with your enemies filling them out and communicating with each other in a way that genuinely made you feel like someone struggling to survive. As gaming continues to evolve and explore new territories, titles like Manhunt prove that we can run the gamut from incredibly cutesy platformers like whatever Kirby's up to, all the way down to classics like Manhunt, Mortal Kombat, Doom, etc. And that's our list. Are there any other games that you'd have a hard time convincing your children were worth playing in the first place? Let us know in the comments below. You can find us on social media here, here, and here. I'm Scott from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.